How's it going guys? It's Kay Cars, and in today's video I wanted to give you guys a two and a half year ownership review of my 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ. So I've had this thing for like I said two and a half years. I got it back in January of 2020 and I got it for around $3,500. Now I really do think it was a very good deal considering how good of a condition I got it in and in this video I wanted to give you guys you know my overall thoughts of the Jeep, how I feel about it, some issues that have come up and also give you guys a general overview of all the work that has been done to my Jeep ever since then. Also some things that you guys should look out for if you are a potential Jeep Cherokee XJ buyer or if you already have one. So so let's go ahead and jump right into it so basically i have loved every single piece of ownership of this jeep now of course it does have problems just like with any other old vehicle um, you know especially jeeps and one of those problems being rust now whenever i first got this jeep it had a huge rust hole on the back of the driver's side rocker panel right over here and as you can see we did get that all fixed up so we got a brand new inner and outer rocker panel so as you can see right there it does look a whole lot better and i can also show you guys the inside here we also did get the door jams fixed up as well got brand new screws right here too so definitely made it look a whole lot better like that right there you can see the line where they painted over the new panel right there so definitely very happy with how this has been holding up it's been about a year and a half right now since we got the rocker panel replaced and you can see right here this little fender piece right here this is an actual like metal so it's not going to rust but it is a little bit discolored here you can see it has that rusty color right there but i think something that would be good is to get this whole like wheel well or fender arch replaced i think that would be a very good addition to the jeep now on the topic of more rust issues a very common spot for rust on these old xj's is the rear lower quarter panels which is right over here now before this thing was pretty much non-existent and this bumper end cap right here was super flimsy i could basically like tear it off if i really tried if i really wanted to so that's how bad it was back here and obviously we have gotten that fixed up as well so we pretty much got the rust fixed up on both sides the driver's side was a little bit worse but go ahead and show you guys what the passenger side looks like here as well so as for the passenger side here there also was rust on the rocker panel here in the back as well but it wasn't a huge hole like it was on the driver's side so we did have some surface rust back here as well but of course we also did get a brand new rocker panel installed to keep the rust away as much as possible we also have the door jam and you can see the line right there where they painted with the new rocker panel right there so whole thing overall i think looks pretty good and of course we also did get brand new screws on this little plastic piece right here as well and then right here you can see the end of the new paint right there now one thing i wanted to point out really quick here while we're on the passenger side here i know something pretty common is the door click that you get with these old jeeps so it kind of just clicks when you cross that point right there and if you look all the way right here it's just that little pin right there that pops in and out when you move it like that so i'm not exactly sure how to fix that it's probably something super easy but that's something that i have not gotten to yet um honestly it doesn't really bother me too much but you know it's you know it definitely is noticeable whenever it clicks like that so more rust issues here i can show you guys the passenger side of the rear lower quarter panel here so obviously got that replaced as well and it looks really good it's been holding up ever since then so in addition to the new panels we also did get the underside descaled and undercoated with fluid film let me show you guys what that looks like in the front here so as you can tell it's not really that like rubberized black finish fluid film is kind of like an oil based or wax based film that you're supposed to reapply each year so i'm definitely due for a reapplication i haven't done it ever since we got it done the first time which was about a year and a half ago so i definitely want to try like the black finish of fluid film i think it would make the whole underside look a lot better rather than just having like the clear oily based or wax based finish that I have right now because you can definitely still kind of see that rusty color and I just think black would look a whole lot better and just make it look a lot cleaner as well so I'd say rust is definitely one of the most common issues that I've had and it's one of the most common issues among all XJ's another common issue is overheating so I didn't really have any kind of major overheating issues with my Jeep 
but whenever I first got it and whenever I drove it in like high heat conditions like you know around 90 or 100 degrees Fahrenheit whenever I drove it around in those temperatures for around like 20 to 30 minutes I would notice that it kind of gave me like a weird smell like the brakes were burning but it wasn't coming from the brakes it was coming from the front grill and I also noticed that there was kind of like steam or smoke also coming out of the front grill. So although the Jeep was not actually overheating, the temperature gauge was only on like the second mark over 210. So I can show you guys that here just for reference. So you can see 210 is the normal operating temperature. Then the next dash after 210, that's pretty much where it was whenever it was kind of like steaming or smoking out of the front grill. So I'm really not sure what would have caused that i think maybe a possibility is that it was just leaking coolant and the coolant was just evaporating off of the exhaust maybe or anything else so that's definitely a possibility but that is one issue that i have had in terms of overheating even though the jeep wasn't technically overheating it definitely was an issue that i had to take care of and that's exactly what we did so the first issue that i noticed was that my electric fan was not working at all like i tried spinning it and it literally just wouldn't even spin even if i tried spinning it by hand it had a whole bunch of resistance and right now if i spin it you guys can see it looks a whole lot better and it actually works now which is obviously very good so the electric fan actually comes on automatically i believe once the Jeep reaches 218, I think that's the temperature, but somebody correct me down below if that's incorrect. And I believe it also comes on whenever the AC is turned on as well. So now I actually do have a working electric fan and we also did get a lot of the other cooling parts replaced. Other than the electric fan, something else that I noticed was that my coolant was very low. Of course, I wanted to get the cooling system completely flushed, get the coolant replaced, and I wanted everything to just run smoothly and as clean as possible when it comes to cooling. So in addition to the electric fan, which I have a video tutorial on if you guys want to check that out, in addition to that, I also got a coolant flush. I got a brand new water pump, which is right down there. I got a brand new thermostat and thermostat housing right over there. I also got brand new coolant hoses, which there is one right over there. Then the upper is this one right over here. And one thing to note about the coolant hoses is that the stock hoses actually have springs inside of them to prevent them from collapsing under a vacuum. So these brand new hoses do not actually have springs. Now, one advantage of that is that with the springs rust, you don't have to worry about getting any of that rust through the system. So that's one advantage of not having springs. And one disadvantage is that you do run the risk of having these hoses collapse under vacuum. Now, these new hoses are reinforced better, so that's probably not something that I have to worry about, but just something to keep in mind when you compare new hoses versus the stock ones. Now, in addition to that, we also got a, a brand new tensioner pulley and a brand new belt. So. That was all kind of one package. I decided to get a lot of cooling work to this Jeep and kind of just do everything all at once. We still do have the stock radiator. I haven't really had a reason to change it out. I know a lot of people say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I haven't had any issues with the stock radiator. It's been running perfectly fine now that I got most of the cooling parts replaced. And I did get them replaced with genuine Mopar parts. Now I have heard that, you know, you can upgrade, get like a Mishimoto radiator or something like that. But I have heard that the genuine Mopar parts work the best when it comes to these old Jeeps. So you can see also for the belt right there, see the Mopar logo right there. So, you know, my recommendation would be to just go with genuine Mopar parts because I've had good experiences with those parts. Now that I have an actual working electric fan and I have brand new cooling parts, I can drive this Jeep in 100 degrees Fahrenheit and not have to worry about overheating at all. You know, even if it does overheat slightly, that electric fan will kick on and cool it right back down right below 210 where it's supposed to be. So no issues with cooling whatsoever right now. now those are basically the two main issues that I've had with this Jeep and those are pretty much the most common issues that all XJ owners have are just rust and overheating. Now, as I mentioned, the overheating issue wasn't really like actually overheating. I just wanted to get everything all like tuned up and upgraded just to make the cooling system all fresh just so I wouldn't have to worry about any potential issues coming up. Now, the rust issue is pretty much a never ending project when it comes to rust. And I can show you guys a quick example here. I know I told you guys I got the whole underside you know, descaled and undercoated with fluid film. If we take a look at it right over here, you can see some of the rust coming through. And also we can look at this brand new leaf spring right there. Also starting to rust. We can look at the control arms up here. There's the bracket starting to rust. 
brand new control arm starting to rust as well so you know like i mentioned these jeeps are pretty much a never-ending project but you know i just think it's a lot of fun to get an old jeep like this and just continue to restore it and you know bring it back to life i guess so it's been a lot of fun in the past two years of owning this jeep and i don't think i'm ever going to get rid of this thing i just want to continue to restore it and you know upgrade it as much as possible in the two and a half years that i've owned this jeep i've put about three thousand miles on it so i got it with a hundred three thousand and right now it has almost 107,000 so we'll just say 4,000 miles in two and a half years so you know that's not really a crazy amount but you know I do drive it from time to time and you know it's I really haven't had any kind of reliability issues whatsoever even those few times where I told you guys that I saw like steam or smoke coming out of the front grill it wasn't like you know I could still drive it and stuff it was it was kind of running a little bit rough so it might have been misfiring for just a little bit but then after I, you know, I shut it off, put it in neutral, uh, just let it run and cool down for a little bit, it started up and drove just fine after that. So really no kind of real reliability issues with this thing in the past two and a half years. So, you know, in my experience, these old 4.0 liter inline six Jeeps are extremely reliable as long as you take care of them and do all the proper maintenance that you're supposed to do with, you know, basically any car. Now, if you guys are new to the channel and this is your first video that you're watching, you might be wondering about the lift kit and wheels and tires that I have on this Jeep. So I have a lot of review videos on this lift kit and this whole setup right here. And I got this installed, I want to say probably like a year after I got the Jeep. So it's actually the Rusty's 3-inch advanced lift kit. So I decided to get the advanced lift kit because it comes with a lot of extra add-ons as opposed to just the basic or standard lift kit. The standard lift kit, you get your, you know, basics like the coil springs, leaf springs, shocks, all that. Then with the advanced kit, you also do get the addition of the adjustable track bar, the steering stabilizer, uh, sway bar quick disconnects right there. You also do get extended brake lines, which are right over here. You also do get brand new control arms, which I showed you guys right over there. And you do have the option of having adjustable control arms. I just decided to go with the basics because I don't really see a need to have adjustable control arms. I'm not going to be doing anything too crazy with this Jeep. In the rear, you also do have the extended brake lines as well. And I got the full leaf springs as opposed to the Atta leaf. So that's the advanced lift kit right there. I'm very happy with how it's been performing. I took it off-roading, you know, once or twice. Nothing serious, but really happy with how it's been performing. And even stock, this thing did pretty good off-road. I took it to a pretty light off-roading trail. And it was very good. A whole bunch of fun. We'll say, though, that stock, this thing was sagging quite a bit in the rear. Uh, these things are known for having saggy leaf springs when they're stock. So having that lift kit definitely freshened up the whole suspension, obviously, and made that rear not sag anymore. So definitely a very good addition, in my opinion. And I think the stance on this thing looks very good. I can show you guys a side view here. And we can go ahead and talk about the wheels and tires. You can see it has just the right amount of poke right there. Now, these wheels and tires, these are both from ProComp. The wheels are ProComp Series 51 gloss black. These are 15 by 8 with a, I believe it's a 3.75 backspacing. Either that or 2.75 backspacing, one of those two. But those are the wheels. I also do have the ProComp center caps right there as well. Then for the tires, they are the ProComp Extreme MT2, and they are 31 by 10 and a half inches. So you can see size right over there and these are the mt2s which of course are the mud tires you can see the deep tread right there and in my experience i know a lot of people say mud tires aren't good for snow but i did take this jeep on a very fun snow drive up in the mountains and you know it was during a snowstorm and it was a whole bunch of fun it definitely handled very well you know most of the time i was actually just driving in two-wheel drive with no problems whatsoever until we hit a road that was covered in a sheet of ice. I will include some of those videos at the end of this video if you guys want to stick around and check those out. There also has been a lot of minor things that I've done to this Jeep, such as replacing the fuel vapor tube. It was just completely rusted out and it was giving me a check engine light, so I decided to replace that. It's basically just a little tube that runs from the EVAP canister to the gas tank. So I have a tutorial video on that if you guys want to check it out. I also installed these tow hooks from Rugged Ridge. Uh, you know super durable they feel very solid as well and they tie into the frame 
uh, right over there. You guys can see that little black piece right over there. Something else that I've done is replace these front bumper end caps. Now, these are known for fading whenever they sit in direct sunlight on these. So I replaced them with brand new ones, just completely stock, nothing fancy. And we also did have to trim these to fit the 31 inch mud tires here. So trim those up just a little bit. Then in the rear, I do have brand new end caps for the rear. I just have not replaced these yet because I'm waiting until we can replace the rear bumper because I want to do everything all at once. The bumper end caps actually have to come off to take the bumper off. So that's why I'm just waiting to do everything all at once. And the reason I want to take the bumper off is because I want to replace it with a brand new one. And that's the reason right there. So the rear bumper here is probably the most rusty spot on this whole entire Jeep. And I do have a brand new bumper that's waiting to be put on right now. The only thing holding me back right now is I'm still waiting for a driver's side bumper bracket. I already have one for the passenger side, but the driver's side bracket is on back order for like a year. So that's the only thing I'm waiting on right now. So once we get that, we can go ahead and replace the two bumper brackets, the whole rear bumper, get it painted to match the Patriot blue. Then also replace the two bumper end caps and that'll pretty much complete the whole look of the Jeep and, you know, clean it up a little bit more as well. And when it comes to the future plans that I have for this Jeep, you know, functional future plans and not like just cosmetic stuff, I have thought about replacing the steering system in this Jeep. Now, I haven't really done too much research on this, but, you know, to be honest, I haven't had any issues with the stock steering system, but I've heard people say that after getting a lift kit, the next best thing to upgrade is the steering system. So I have been looking at a few different uh, steering systems for XJs. So I have also seen that Rusty's does also make a drag link and a tie rod setup for these XJs, but some of the reviews say that they have clearance issues that it hits like the, I don't know what they said, it hits like the control arm bracket or something. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember exactly what they said, but they've had clearance issues with the Rusty's kit. So I've also heard that the Curry system is probably the best one out there. So might have to look into that a little bit more. But if you guys have any suggestions for good steering systems, good steering setups for XJs, definitely drop those down in the comment section below. One other thing that I wanted to throw into this video is fuel economy. I know a lot of people ask me about that with this Jeep. Now, to be completely honest, fuel economy really isn't something that interests me i don't really pay attention to the fuel economy on my jeep at all you know i didn't get this jeep to have good fuel economy so it really doesn't matter to me what kind of fuel economy it gets as long as it's reliable then you know i'm fine with it so unfortunately i don't really have an answer when it comes to fuel economy but i'm sure some people will be happy to help you guys out in the comments below so definitely let me know what kind of fuel economy your jeep cherokee xj gets down in the comments below because i would definitely be interested to see what those numbers look like yeah guys that's pretty much going to do it for this video like i said around 4,000 miles in two and a half years of ownership of my 2001 jeep cherokee xj haven't had any kind of reliability issues with this thing whatsoever only kind of issues that i would consider real issues are the most common issues which are just the rust and the overheating and even with the overheating, I really haven't had any kind of issues with that when it comes to reliability. I've been very happy with this Jeep so far, and I don't plan to ever get rid of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope I helped some of you guys out if you are deciding whether or not to get a Jeep Cherokee XJ, or if you are already a current owner of a Jeep Cherokee XJ. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to drop those down in the comment section below. And if you guys have any video suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, also drop those down in the comment section below. And if you guys liked this video or found it entertaining, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. All right, he's in four-wheel drive. Here we go again. Oh, it's sliding a little bit. Oh, I am sliding, I'm sliding too. 
You guys can see that is a solid. solid ice right there. Oh my god. Give her a go, I'll push it. I'll push it. <laughs> She's not going guys. I'm gonna try to get some speed. Alright, alright. Oh my shoes are soaked. Be careful. Oh, she's going. Okay, the Jeep, the Jeep is gone. Just slid and is, he's trying to get control of it. This is crazy. This is way better than last video. All right, he's gonna try and get some momentum. I mean, you guys can see he's just slid at least 25 feet, so. All right, let me get back up here. Ah! Yep. All right, with some a little bit of a momentum there, we got over the hump right here.